let's talk about the way we're going to represent the domains and ranges for our functions and relations. You remember the domain is your set of x values while your range is your set of y values. We also call the domain the input and we call the range the output. When you're using a set builder notation, we're going to use these brackets to denote the set. In this case, we're going to um, be defining our x variables. This line right here is read such that and this last part right here is the description. So this set is defined to be, t is defined to be, the set of x such that x is a natural number and x is greater than 6. If I wanted to define a set s to be the set of y, so this is going to be a range, so the set of y such that y is positive, I would do that. I could also define set u to be the set of x such that x is an element of the real variables. I could do it that way as well. When we use interval notation, this is just another way to represent domains and ranges. We can use parentheses when we're not including the endpoints, when we have greater than or less than. We're going to use brackets when we have greater than or equal to um, or less than or equal to symbols. So basically when we are including the endpoints. And then we're going to use the infinity symbol, which is a giant kind of sideways eight, to indicate that the interval continues in the positive direction forever. We're going to put a negative sign out there when it continues forever in the negative direction. So let's do a couple. Suppose I have the inequality x is greater than or equal to 2. You can graph that. We're going to include the 2 and then our arrow will continue on in the greater than direction. Now, what, how would I write this in interval notation? Well, I'm including the 2, so I'm going to use the close bracket. And I'm going to start at 2, and I'm going to go to positive infinity. Now, infinity is not actually a point, so we can't include it. Whenever you have infinity, you're going to use the um, parentheses. If I want it to graph uh, x is less than 2, I'm going to use an open circle because I'm not including 2. And then I want all of the x that are less than 2. So what is this representation in interval notation? Well, we're going to start at negative infinity, so I want that open parentheses, negative infinity, and then we're going to go to 2. But we're not going to include 2, so we're going to have another parentheses. Suppose I wanted um, x greater than 1 and less than or equal to 5. Let's see, so I'm going to go to 1, and it's going to be open. I'm going to go to 5 and it's going to be closed. Graphically, oh, sorry about that. What does this look like in interval notation? Well, I'm not including the 1, so that's going to be open. But I am including the 5, so that will be a closed bracket. Now, how would I represent x less than negative 3? Well, graphically, it's going to look like this. Or, x is greater than or equal to 4, so this one's going to be closed. Okay, so this is going to have two parts. This one's going to be from negative infinity to negative 3, and these are both going to be open. And that is going to be unioned with closed bracket 4 to positive infinity. Now sometimes we need to know whether a function is a function or not, whether a relation is a function or not, and we use the vertical line test. The vertical line test 
just gives us a visual indicator as to whether what we're dealing with is a function or not. Basically, take a vertical line, and if it crosses at two points, at any point, um, and for any x value, if it crosses uh, at, at one or, or more than one point, then it's not a function. So this right here you see, we cross at two points. We cross here and here. So this is not a function. Well, that's kind of a mess. Let's go to this, this messy looking one. Surely this one's not a function if that simple one wasn't a function. But it turns out this one is a function because no matter where I bring this vertical line, it crosses the curve at exactly one point. So this one is a function. Let's come down here. What about this one down here, the little green one? I see as I drag my vertical line, it crosses the curve at most at one point. So this one is a function. Let me check my red one. If I check the red one. Oh, this one crosses at multiple points. So this one is not a function. So let's look at this problem. What are the domains and ranges of the relation? Well, to find the domain, I'm going to write the word domain, and then I'm going to record my x values. So it's 3, 0, 2, 9, and 23. This is the domain. What are the ranges? For the ranges, I'm going to record the y values. So 14, 7, 0, 18, 23, and 99. Now, is this relation a function? Well, for this one, I see that the 2 maps to both the 3 and the negative 3. So this one is not a function because one input has two outputs. Is this one a function? Let's see. I have negative 7. 9, 14, and 7. All of my inputs are unique, and so they can only have one output. So the negative 7 maps to 14, the 9 maps to negative 7, the 14 maps to 7, and the 7 maps to 14. So they're all unique, so this one is a function.